Ramblings of a Thoughtless Man. That's what this should be titled. From the NFL to Hollywood to fatherhood, join me as I tackle my next journey in life, becoming Hollywood's next action star. I certainly don't want to be in here today. I do not want to work out. My body's not feeling it. My mind is feeling a little blue, a little dark, a little dark blue maybe. I feel like I should listen to some blues. Maybe I'll understand it more. Uh, blue plates. I'm starting to see everything blue now. Um, dang it, I can't stop seeing it. Okay. Well, I think this is the utility of creating long form content every day, you know, is that you're going to see me in the highs and the lows and uh, that I have to keep going. Now, I think days like these are actually a much bigger part of the equation of keeping momentum than we realize because I can feel my brain coming up with all the automatic excuses that I'm not even trying for. It's just, you know, you're not going to give a great, you're not going to get a great effort today. Your body's not primed. Go check your recovery score on whoop. And I bet it's going to say you're not recovered. And you know, you're not going to be able to get the most out of these lifts today. Your nervous system isn't ready. You know, you, you don't have as much time. There's just a million of them that can keep coming. And, um, I think even just going through the motions to a degree on days like this, where you keep moving, um, you keep putting a little money in the bank is, is much bigger than we realize on getting towards the goals. Even if the results of those the day didn't look like you wanted them to, like if they weren't ideal because the opposite of continuing moving on these days is to not move. And then maybe tomorrow you don't feel good either. Now it's a lot easier to say, ah, well, maybe in another day I'll feel a little better. Maybe you start skipping two or three days. All of a sudden you just stay in the same place. You go like this and this and this and this. And, th and then really maybe you moved an inch the whole year. And I'm speaking from experience. Um, weird on days where you feel a little down too, for me, is I'll wake up feeling like a champ. And I don't know if it's because like I just didn't sleep deep at all and I was just in this light light sleep and I woke up feeling like oh kind of awake that means it's gonna be a great day and then all of a sudden late morning slaps me in the face and I feel weird and cagey and antsy and anxious and kind of bottled up and what the hell's going on what's wrong nothing's wrong you know everybody has some ups and downs it's part of life and it's all making you better character development on days like today. That is the bright side. That's the silver lining. That's how it's working for you is if you decide, okay, I'm going to get after it anyways. I'm going to stick to my commitments because your commitments are greater than your feelings. You know, but overall, this process so far, I started a little under 224. I'm now 226 and a half morning weight. So I'm making progress. And I think I'm even a bit leaner than I started. And obviously some of that weight's gonna be water from retention, uh, water retention from salt and higher carb intake and glycogen filling the muscles and maybe even some inflammation from lifting more. But I'll tell you what, it looks a whole lot better than I did when I started. Uh, I'm passing the mirror test. So that's definitely a positive. Today, I think um, I'm going to let the compound lift do most of the talking, do most of the work, uh, push it in there. I think I'm going to do um, a different setup to hit the hamstrings today. We'll see if it works. I'll show you what that looks like. Hit the calves and then get the heck out of here. That something was a little off in here. Not only are we crooked, I don't have any um, music going. So I'm just sitting here with my thoughts that are kind of sick today. That's not fun. <laughs> you know, uh, that's all I really got to say about that. All right, so I'm gonna do a little bit of a different setup for the split squats. Uh, I'm gonna start doing them with these numbers here on the rep rack because eventually I'm gonna have to come 
over this way anyways. My, my uh, power block dumbbells only go up to 90s. Um, it's 180 total pounds. Eventually I'll be working up, but these have some spin to it. So as I'm going down, it just feels like a more natural movement um, than putting my back foot on a bench. And it's a small thing, but again, if, it, if something feels a little bit better, it, it does something to you mentally. It stimulates you and you're ready to go. So uh, again, I'm just still feeling out this exercise. Um, ah, slow down, pause at the bottom, eliminate any momentum. <clears throat> and drive up like you're trying to jump. Ooh. Okay. Get your balance here or there. Come up. Ah. So I'm just gonna do five reps of those. Each set, I may go up a little more as well and wait. Oh, hmm. Ah. 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 Again, I love the Bulgarian split squat for a lot of reasons I've mentioned in the past, but it's a great compound movement to build around that I think applies much better in an athletic context, at least from my experience and from what I've seen from a lot of people around me. Uh, great for knee stability, um, being able to have unilateral strength in the legs. Another thing I really love about split squats is you lighten the load. I mean, you're working one leg at a time, so that working leg is gonna have less than half than what you would on a traditional back squat. And uh, you can eliminate having to put 500 pounds on, on your low back and eliminate some injury risk. And then I lighten it up even more. And instead of going for as heavy as I can, I'll go down slow and controlled, boom, pause at that bottom part, eliminate all the momentum, and like a plyometric jump is what you're trying to simulate. So it's all, it's all about not how much weight you can move, but how fast you can move that weight, that rate of force development, which is great for athletics. Um, and so what I've noticed with that is you still get great muscle building benefits and great athletic benefits from it. And it eliminates a whole bunch of injury risk. And so that's a win-win-win for me. Ooh. So I'm actually going to take about 30 seconds because this is my weaker leg because of the knee. Give that a minute so I don't rush a good thing. It's leg day, so you know I got my skater shoes on. This is my Janowski's dog. So when I learned how to do my first pop shove it. Hey! Hey! Oh shoot, that's a little off kilter there, isn't it? Yep. <sighs> My body is sure fighting me today. My mind even more. Come on. Here just to feel it. Hmm. Ha! Ooh, that was too close. Just get some 
steady reps in, get a little more of a pump. For any of you meatheads out there kind of wondering why it seems like I'm taking it easier on my legs than my upper body, it's because I am. And not probably for the reasons you think. You know, some guys just don't want to work their legs. It's about playing the long game. It's about, uh, maybe I'll stop instead of trying to do two things at once. For me, it's all about athletic development for the legs. I'm not trying to grow power or size in the thighs. Ooh, that rhymed. That rhymes. Um, it's more about, again, rate of force development, athleticism, being able to maintain the power and usable strength um, to be able to do my own stunts. I do want to grow the calves, but everything else is more tailored towards performance as opposed to doing a ton of volume, trying to get them as big as possible. Mostly just makes it harder to fit into pants and makes me stiffer, not able to move as well. <clears throat> Ooh. Man, there are just some days you really don't want to be in here. Ah, Forge's character. <laughs> I honestly didn't count on either of those. Hopefully they were even. All right, getting a little creative with my rep fitness rack here. Lowering the bar down to here, gonna put a little pad on the barbell, lean my leg up against that. I got an ankle attachment on. I'm gonna put to the low cable pulley and uh, do some hamstring curls standing. We'll see, this is my first time ever trying this, so we'll see if I'm a genius or idiot. Please be genius for once. Stimpy, you idiot. Here we go. Oh, feels good so far. Yeah, this is going to be, this is going to be a new go-to. Honestly, there's a, uh, a big reason why I don't do many hamstring curls is because the setup of doing this while lying on a bench and setting up the, the ankle pieces one at a time, it's just such a hassle that I skip it a lot of the time. And the only Hamstring curls I do are Nordic hamstring curls for knee stability and athleticism. Um, but this is going to be a great way to get some more volume in on the hamstrings in kind of a low effort way. Like this is nowhere near as shocking to the body as RDLs or something of that nature. So on today, on a day like today, this is a, a nice way to make a, an audible when my body's not quite primed. Of course, I could go just lighter on some of the things I was gonna do or whatever, but you know, on something like RDLs where there's so much low back involvement, so many ways where, especially if you're not, you know, really mentally psychologically ex excited about it. It's easy to just be like, Shh, dude, I'm just doing this to check it off the list. Let me get through it quickly. And you're kind of pissed off doing it. And then you forego on your form. Boom, there you slip a disc. Um, I would rather do something like this. Keep checking the boxes, keep momentum rolling, make an adjustment. <sighs> then risk injury or skip a workout altogether. Uh. Uh, uh, let's see if I play with this. Yeah, that's a lot better. Okay, get a lean forward through the rack here. Oh, yeah. I don't know how I didn't think of this earlier. Uh, 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 mm. Mm. I'm just going to switch back and forth. Do three total sets on each leg here. Mm. Uh, oh. Uh, uh, uh. Hey. What is that squeaking? I don't like it. It's stressing me out. Knock it off. 
something real bad is going to happen, I feel. That's what the sound makes me think. But you know what? That's when I'll just cover my eyes. Uh, uh, when I was a kid on road trips, or just any time uh, when my parents were driving and I was in the back seat, any time we'd pass the semi-truck, you know, they have the, all those wheels and all these huge bolts. We're going so fast. For whatever reason, my brain would always tell me one of those bolts is going to perfectly time up to just rock it off and go right through your eye. So I would always kind of do this. Pansy move, right? Speaking of eye patches, why is, why is that associated with pirates so much? Was that like a form of torture for pirates? Like if you get caught in a tight situation, they take your eye? Why, why is that a thing? Or did, did Disney do that? Captain Hook was my first nightmare, speaking of pirates. I remember being uh, on a ship, and I couldn't see Captain Hook, but I, uh, I could hear from all angles, all around me, above in the sky, I could hear his laugh, the Dustin Hoffman uh, Hook, which I love that movie. I rewatched that. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, within the past couple years, and man, it really holds up. It's magical. My second nightmare was E.T., and uh, he was chasing me on like a cracked tundra desert ground, and I, every time I would look back, he was behind me. And I ran like that to my parents' bedroom. <sighs> Ramblings of a thoughtless man. That's what this should be titled. I like that. Take note of that. This is just to remember. Ramblings of a thoughtless man. There's a story there somewhere. I see a bum in some corner just, you know, hurling insults at everyone. Kind of like the unfunny version of uh, that Steve Martin movie where he starts off the movie all messed up and then they tell you why he got there. Uh, ramblings of a thoughtless man. <sighs> Yeah, it's, this is a good one. I'm getting, getting a good burn on this. I'm not trying to be super explosive on this. Just squeeze it up top as fast I can, or as hard as I can. Ah. Woo. This is going to be a fun one to load up at some point. You know what's nice about this, making a video, is that um, I'm still just talking to myself. But I don't, I don't have to feel crazy doing it because it's for a video. But this is happening whether the camera's there or not, which, um, which is the thing. So whatever that means, it means. Hmm. I'm just going to go uh, single leg calf raises on the slant, um, honestly, because I don't want to take this rig down and set up the standing calf raise. Uh, so this will save me some time. <clears throat> Same principles apply. Control it down, kind of like you're pulling it down with your anterior tib. Stop, kill momentum. Squeeze it up. Uh, let me see if that it's better to yeah. Uh, uh, something about that feels more balanced. Uh, here we go. Uh, mm. uh. <clears throat> Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. 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 
Um, yeah, as I mentioned earlier about, you know, oh, I'm, oh, hey, that, that could have been a fun one. Uh, oh, I'm taking it easier on my legs. You know, I'm being kind of silly, but serious at the same time. Um, I've mentioned that I'm, I'm taking some volume away from my legs and putting that volume more towards my growth need areas, which is, you know, my shirts and shorts muscles, the neck, arms, and calves. Um, as a football player, you, they, football players generally aren't big on the auxiliary lift. So you get this huge trunk and these huge trunky legs, but everything else is, if it's not performance based, we're not going to be doing a ton of curls. Uh, you know, shoulders, calves, and it, it, we do some neck, you know, because you need that for hitting. Um, and generally, I was a little bit of a meathead, so I had my moments where I was, I was definitely getting extra work in there. But um, all that to consider, basically, for my legs, what I'm trying to do, since I'm going to have limited volume, is get the most bang for my buck that I can with something like a Bulgarian split squat, where not only is it a compound lift, but it's a compound lift that I can tailor in a way to give me great athletic output and gains and some muscle gain and um, rate of force development, which will help me in being able to, you know, jump and sprint and change direction and have the knee stability I need to be able to do my stunts and things of that nature. Um, so the exercises that I, I pick, although minimal, I want them to be the, the best ones towards my goals, which are more performance based in the lower body while still growing the chickens. So yeah, minimalistic day for sure, but infinitely better than not getting it in. Uh, because you skip one day, you're prone to skip more. So if you're not feeling it, but you have goals and you've made commitments, keep getting after it. Because days like these, where maybe the workload and the efficiency and the productivity and just getting the great workout, maybe it's not quite what is ideal. It's not quite what you know you're capable of if you're fresh and ready, but you're not going to be fresh and ready and primed at all times. It's so much better and it's so much more important to still get it in even at a lower level on days like these to keep the momentum going. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for days like these because these are where your character's developed. Uh, so keep getting after it. Uh, hit me in the comments below with any questions or things you'd want me to cover. Somebody hit me recently saying um, full day of eating, so that, that's going to come up likely this week. Uh, stay tuned. Subscribe for the journey. Love y'all.